Good morning from Paris. We grabbed a quick breakfast that I didn't film, so this vlog starts with lunch. We got a ton of oysters and they were all so good. You see the different labels? It's because each four were from a different place. I got a little carried away with filming this. This is the aftermath. I also got ceviche. It was so good. It wasn't the traditional ceviche. It had kiwi in it and was very kiwi flavored, but it was so good. How many flags do you want? Yes. <laughs> Everyone was out. It was such a nice day. So this was filmed at the end of May, which is probably why the weather was so nice. But I currently live in London and the weather here has been so bad until literally this week that I'm editing this uh, in mid-June that I was actually shocked to experience a warm and sunny day. I felt like I was in a different climate and not two hours away by train. Then we went to the museum. Then we took a little break and sat down at this garden. We didn't really do anything special that day, just hung out and had nice food. Which brings us to dinner. I had a burrata for the starter. And then I had steak and mashed potatoes. On our way back to the hotel, we stopped by Palais Royal and took some footage because I thought it really matched my outfit. The next day, we got on a train and went to the Champagne region. So in order for a bubbly wine to be called Champagne, it needs to come from this specific region in France and also to meet certain criteria in terms of how it's made. So the main town is Epernay, which is basically the capital of Champagne and where all the Champagne houses are located. And they even have a main street that is called Avenue de Champagne or Champagne Avenue. You can visit any of the champagne houses and see how they make their champagne and they're gonna tell you about the process and the history of the brand. When planning this trip, we actually wanted to visit a smaller champagne house to have a more intimate experience. So that winery was in a different town called A and we initially planned to take bikes from Epernay to A. I hope I pronounced it correctly, but we didn't book in advance and apparently there's only one bike rental place and it was fully booked. They literally had a sign that said something along the lines of don't even ask, we're fully booked. So we didn't have a bike, but we still needed to get to the other town for the champagne tasting and the winery tour. So we wanted to take a taxi and for some reason we just couldn't get one. And then we tried to take a bus and we had just missed it. And the next one was going to be, I think, in either 30 minutes or an hour later. Either way, it was too long for us to wait. So um, after some waiting, we finally managed to get an Uber. The driver dropped us off in A and we found on Google a place to rent a bike there. I didn't film it because we were kind of in a rush and trying to figure out where the bike place was, but we basically had to go to someone's farmhouse through some fields and bushes. And I was eventually kind of surprised it actually existed when we finally made it. Anyway, we went to the Henri Giraud Champagne Winery 
they gave us a tour of the winery and explained about the process. And interestingly enough, it's also the only champagne house where they age their um, champagne in oak barrels, similarly to wine, usually it's metal barrels. And it was super interesting to learn and it was unique. So that's why we decided to go for this one. Here are the oak barrels where they aged the champagnes in. I didn't know anything about champagne before coming here and it was actually really interesting to learn that unlike wine that you have from a specific harvest, specific year, specific grapes, with champagne you actually have a blend from different harvests over the years. I think in this winery they go like 25 years back. So they have reserves and they add to the reserves with each harvest. And then to bottle the champagne, they decide how to blend them based on the quality and the flavor profile of like the harvest and the blend itself that they already have. It was super interesting. And then we had a champagne tasting. It was very cool. Our guide was super knowledgeable and nice. We tried three champagnes and one ratafia, which is like a dessert wine. An interesting difference between wine and champagne wineries is that with wine, at least in Italy, as far as I know, the vineyards are located in the same area as the winery. Whereas with champagne, the vineyards can be in different locations nearby. Of course, they still have to be within the champagne region. Our guide actually showed us a map of champagne and where the different types of grapes grow. Then we had lunch. And then we biked through A and onto the vineyards. Then we took an Uber back to Epernay and from there we took a train back to Paris. We had dinner. And that was the end of day two. The next day, my partner actually surprised me and told me that we need to pack up because we're going to another hotel. And the hotel was the hotel that is on the premises of the Versailles Palace. It was such a cool experience. I'll make a whole separate video about it, going into details and the private tour of Versailles, but it was amazing. I'm currently working on that video and it'll be the next video post on my channel, so stay tuned. That night in Versailles was our last night here in France. So in the following morning, we headed back to Paris in order to take the train back to London. I've never seen this tiny Statue of Liberty here. So we needed to leave our suitcases somewhere and we obviously didn't have a hotel um, for that day. So we found one of these locker facilities. So we just booked a couple lockers and put our suitcases there for a few hours. We had a few hours to spend in Paris and we didn't do much. We just had lunch at an Italian restaurant, walked around a little bit and headed over to the train station. Thanks for watching. See you later.